laptops. <laughs> hey, you fresh, right? I be cussing like hell before I get started sometimes. Okay. I want to go deeper with what I um, I just talked about, you know, uh, the basis of contracts just a few minutes ago. If you haven't seen that, uh, take, a, take a moment to go look at that uh, before you see this one here. If you don't already have the basics when it comes to contract. Now, this is Black's Law Dictionary 2009. We're going to go with the word contract. And I'm going to show y'all something about court orders. Okay? I'm going to show y'all. This, this is going to blow y'all mind. <laughs> If you if, 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 if you haven't already experienced this already. Oh man, see now these damn laptop doing this shit again. Where we go? Uh okay, I just make it big and then bring it over. Here we go. Laptops, boy. God damn. I'm trying to make it big enough for y'all to see it. Without um looking like I'm retarded over here with these big ass letters. Okay. Okay. Contract. An agreement. Keyword, agreement between two or more parties. Creating obligations. Creating obligations that are enforceable or otherwise recognizable at law. Or otherwise recognizable at law. It's a binding contract. Okay. The writing that set forth us such an agreement. You say the writing that sets forth such an agreement. A contract is valid if, uh, if a valid, say if, if valid under the law of, uh, of residence of the party wishing to enforce the contract. Okay, I want to kind of start out by showing you the, 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 the definition of contract and we're going to kind of, I just had to go back over that before I go into what I'm about to go into. Let me see, I'm going to entertain this a little bit too, just because it's there. The term contract has been used indifferently to infer to three different things. One, a series of operative acts by, by the parties resulting in, in new legal re, uh, relations. Two, the physical document executed by the parties as, uh, as the lasting evidence of their, of their having performed uh, the necessary operative acts and also as an operative fact in itself. That's something to prove that y'all actually agreed to that. Okay. Number three, the legal relation, the re legal, the legal relations resulting from the operative acts, uh, consisting of the right uh, of a right or rights in personum, um, and, and their corresponding duties accompanied by certain powers, privileges, and immunities. The sum of, of these legal relations is often called obligation. The, uh, the present editor refers to uh, to define contract in a sense. Okay, that's you no. Know, this is the resources as the way they got there from. They quoted this. Um, I'm gonna entertain this too. A contract is a promise, or uh, or a set of promises for for uh, for breach of which the law gives a remedy, or the performance of which the uh, the law in some way recognizes as a duty. The definition may not be entirely satisfactory since it requires a subsequent definition of the of the circ, uh, of the circumstances under which the law does does in fact attach legal obligations to promises. Say so if uh, if a definition were uh, were attempted which um, which should cover these operative facts, it it would re it would require compressing the entire law relating to the formation of contracts into into a single sentence and there's the um that's the uh, the source that you get from that now i was speaking about this because you have to understand the child support enforcement act this a child support enforcement act, when they talk about getting a court order in place they're talking about getting an agreement between two or more parties when they talk about child support, we're going to talk about two parties, okay? There's baby mama and baby daddy. <laughs> it's an agreement. They're trying to get you two to agree to something. I want to pause this video, but uh, we're going to see. I'm going to see this. I'm going I'm to do that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to here. Child, let me see if I can find it. Uh, I want to pause the video, but... Uh, because, you know, for the sake of time. Because <clears throat> I want to find... Uh, 
I want to find that document. It actually, it, it went through the entire, um, how the hell I get a, back, a black background? I didn't set this like this. Or these laptops, something else. But uh, anyway, I'm trying to find that as a document. Basically went through the whole thing about the Child Support Enforcement Act. Here we go. I think this is it right here. I think this is it right here. People have to understand. You know how people are talking about they're on Section 8? <laughs> you know, the chicks that be on Section 8 that say they're living in low-income uh, apartments or whatever, that's what they're talking about, Section 8. So uh, this talks about the, um, as a matter of fact, I want to say, is it down to, is it 31? I want to say it's 31, 831. 31. Let's see. Establishing orders. Child support. Yeah, here we go. I'm going to see. I think this is it, but we're going to find out. I want to remove this, but anyway, we're going to work with it. I want it to be big so y'all can see it. Okay. Um, a child, it says, a child support order legally obligates non-custodial parents to provide financial support for their children and, st and stipulates the amount of the obligation. And, and how it uh, is to be paid. Say so many states have statutes that, that provide that in the, in the absence of child support award, of a child support award, the payment of, of uh, TANF, we know temporary assistance for needy families, uh, benefits uh, to the child or the non-custodial parent uh, creates a, due, uh, a debt due from the, from the parent or parents to the, uh, to the amount of the TANF benefits. Other states operate under the under the com, other states operate under the common common law principle, which which maintains that a father is obligated to reimburse any person who has who has provided his child uh, for food, shelter, clothing, medical attention, or education. States can uh, can establish child support obligations either by uh, uh, by judicial or administrative process. Okay. That's another topic by itself because they can't co-mingle in powers. Administrative, there's a, there's a judicial, administrative, and legislative powers. According to the Constitution, they can't co-mingle at all. So that's a violation of, due pro of, of, of the uh, separation of powers, okay? It says or, true enough, but they, they, go, they go beyond, they push that. That's another topic for another stop. Matter of fact, look at that, judicial and administrative systems. That's already that automatic. You tell by the way this is by where this is going. They're trying to they they're commingling them. Um, you can't use judicial and administrative uh, powers uh, to do to. That's what makes that's another thing that makes this unconstitutional because it violates the uh, the separation of powers uh, uh, that's addressed by the Constitution. Huh. Uh, so keep that in mind when you want to fight against a child support case. Okay. The courts have, uh, have, and that wasn't my, my reason for pulling this up, but I just noticed and thought I'd throw that side note out here. Y'all see that for yourself. This is the Child Support Enforcement Act. If you look in uh, Section 8 of the Child Support Enforcement Act. Okay. The courts have traditionally played a role, a major role in child, in child support programs. Uh, judges establish orders, establish paternity, and provide authority for all enforcement or activity. The child support legislature generally concludes that the that the judicial process offers um, several advantages, uh, uh, sp specifically by by, provo by providing more adequate protection for the legal rights of the non-custodial parent and and by offering a wide range of enforcement remedies. Uh, I haven't seen that, such as uh, civil civil contempt and and possible uh, incarnate uh, incarnation. Hmm. hmm. Incarceration. I don't say incarnation. In incarceration. Now this saying right here. Uh, I don't know why I say incarcerate. Uh, incarnation. <laughs> but anyway, um, I'm gonna read that again. The child support leg uh, 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 literature uh, generally concludes that the the judicial process offers several advantages, specifically by providing more adequate protection for the legal rights of non-custodial parents and and by offering a, a, a wide range of inf uh, enforcement remedies <laughs> this is a fucking this, this is a damn lie they know that's a damn lie we, we know by the we know by the uh uh the reputation of of of, of uh, family court 
they don't they don't so they don't support the man's rights you have to do that your damn self and if you get an attorney yeah he'll help your ass as long as he can turn you into a debt slave uh which is called peenage that's a near you turn somebody into a debt slave then that you know yeah he'll help you some kind of way as long as they can get paid off of it and make you the damn atm out of the out of the deal and by offering a wide range of enforcement remedies uh such as a uh, civil contempt <laughs> civil contempt and possible in, uh, uh, in car, in, incarceration. Yeah, yeah, you, the baby daddy, you go to jail. <laughs> civil contempt might be for, you know, yeah, yeah, anyway. Uh, a major problem of uh, for using, the a major problem of using courts, however, is that they are often uh, cumbersome, uh, expensive, and time-consuming. Say, thus, the advantages of, of an administrative process are very compelling. These include offering quicker services because documents uh, do not have to be fit, do not have to be filed with the, the, uh, the, the, the court clerk nor await the signature of the judge, eliminating the time consuming prob uh, problems in, in scheduling court appearances, providing the more uh, a more uniform and consistent obligation uh, amount the, the, and saving money uh, because of, of reduced court costs and attorney fees. That's not what I was looking for, but uh, let's see. Uh, speeding processes, child support officials, process improvement and approval. Mm -hmm. I, I want to go through this whole thing, but I'm going to let y'all read it to yourself. Oh, here we go. I'm going to start. I'm going to read this because I remember telling y'all in another in another uh, video, previous video, that they're not real judges anyway. So here we go. I'm going uh, gonna, I'm gonna to do right here. Most child support officials view the, gr uh, the growth of expedient ex ex uh, administrative processes as an improvement in the child support program. An expedient uh, judicial process, judicial process, keep in mind to keep on saying administrative, then it's saying judicial, but anyway. Process is a legal process in, 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 uh, in effect under the state's judicial system that, that um, reduces the processing time of, esta of establishing and enforcing a, su a support order. They say establishing and enforcing. They can't, keep in mind, they can't enforce anything until they establish it. They can't, they can't make you give them information. That's part of the establishing process. They got to get you to agree to this stuff. By, uh, they establish it by getting you to agree to, to be a part of this, to participate in this program. And then once they get you to agree, they can put an order in. And then, then then they can enforce the order. Once they get, get y'all to agree, they can enforce the order. To expedient, I th thought I'd throw that out there. To expedite cases process uh, 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 case processing, a, a judge surrogate, see that, is given authority to take testimony and establish a record uh, evaluate uh, evaluate and make initial decisions. Enter enter default orders. If the non-custodial parent does not respond to uh, to notice hmm, or, or or other state service of process in a timely manner, see I'm talking about you're supposed to respond. That's how do you get defaulted into a court order because you did not respond. You get an order and then you do, you choose not to respond. You not you say to, in a timely manner say does not respond. I mean you didn't file an order. You didn't file a, re a rebuttal into it. You didn't respond file no type of objection and say that's how you get a default judgment default orders right there that's how you end up you get you get served you don't file nothing in the court case and before you know it your damn wages done got garnished because you got a default order filed in that court case against you because you did not respond and that that's respond means to you didn't respond that is equi that is equivalent to a acquiescence How do I spell that shit? Acquiescence. Here we go. Accept. It's a accept something reluctantly without protest. Accept. That's equivalent to agreeing. Okay. In law, right here. In law, acquiescence occurs when a person knowingly stands by without raising any objection to the infringement of their rights while someone else unknowingly and without malice, after uh, thought, 
act in the, in a manner inconsistent with their rights. Yeah, that's a, that's Wikipedia, but it also says that in the law dictionaries. So let's stay on this, stay on topic. You acquiescence because you didn't file no objection and you didn't file nothing in there that says you didn't want to do it. Now, in a timing fan, they say, now I'm going to start this over again to expedite cases, case process, a judge surrogate. I want to, let me, let me stop with that for that. Let me see. What does it mean to be a surrogate? Hmm. What does that say first? A judge surrogate is a retired Supreme Court judge or a retired district court judge. Um, this is study.com. I don't even know if that's even, that's even a good source. Let me see. We know what surrogate means, don't we? Uh, let me see what the legal... See what that's going to find. Say the surrogate court. Not that. We know what surrogate means, though. Hold on a second. That's why they had it in quotation marks. Y'all notice that. A surrogate is a person acting on behalf of someone else as a substitute. A woman who gives birth to a child. You see, that's the, this This is a law right here. We all we use this source. <laughs> a woman who gives birth uh, to, uh, to a child or, of, of another woman who is unable to conceive a child on her own is, is referred to as a surrogate mother. Now that's why they got surrogate. Uh, that's why they have judge surrogate written right there. It's in quotation marks. They're not real judges. <laughs> he's a substitute. He's he's acting like a judge, but he ain't no real judge. Okay. Now moving forward to to expedite the cases process case processing, a judge surrogate is given authority to take to take it to take testimony and establish a record evaluate and make it initial decisions enter default judgment if the if the non custodial parent does not respond to the notice like you got served i tell y'all stop fucking running you don't run from no damn notice you receive that motherfucking answer y'all some damn men you're men stop running from people you fucking men you don't run from a goddamn notice or the state you say to respond to the notice or state sir or state service or process Okay, that's if you're getting served by, you know, served by a deputy sheriff. A lot of times the deputies, are, they'll, they'll serve process service as well. They'll process service. So it say in a timely manner, except, except it say if they don't, if they don't respond uh, to, you know, they don't respond to the notice or, or state or, or, or other state uh, service or process in a timely manner, except voluntary acknowledgement of support liability and approved stipulated agreements to pay child support keywords voluntary acknowledgement except voluntary of support and then you say agreement to pay keyword is agreement okay that's what that order the default order came from your lack of response you did you you didn't you didn't uh you didn't rebut the agreement you didn't rebut it. So they went with the presumption that you agreed to do it. Okay, you agree, you acquiesces into it. In addition, if the state establishes paternity using the expedited uh, judicial service, the surrogate, the surrogate can accept voluntary acknowledgement of paternity, of paternity. Okay, now see, y'all do it through the courts, you do the same thing. You don't need to take no DNA test, you don't give them your DNA. So that's why you say in addition, that means added to this here. You know, that's that's one of another way they get a default order. Say uh, a surrogate can accept voluntary acknowledgement of paternity. OK, uh, then it says, um, let's see. It said uh, the state establishes paternity by using the expedited uh, judicial process. And it says, um, let's see, the surrogate can can accept voluntary paternity uh, acknowledgement of paternity. The judge surrogate. Are, are, are sometimes referred to as court masters, referees, hearing officers, commissioners, and presiding or, or presiding officers. The purpose of the expedited administrative process is to increase effectiveness and meet specified um, processing times in child support cases and paternity actions. Federal regulations specify that 90% of cases must be processed within three months, 98% within six months, and 100% within 12 months. They gonna keep trying your ass. A lot of times they try your ass, that's why they drag out for so damn long, okay? They say it must be processed within three months. 
You keep on goddamn rebutting and keep standing on them. Keep awaiting them out. Keep on filing objections into that shit. Don't know if you had to file objection multiple that multiple times, and that's what you got to do. But you stand you stand on your objection, and you, they're gonna you keep on within twelve months. <laughs> Most of the time, it be gone before twelve months. Cause they, when you when you you stand on your stuff and you know what you're talking about, and you stand on it, and depend on how stubborn your ass is, they'll leave you a long way before then. But uh, you just get that also depends on how you present yourself, how you represent. Okay, federal regulations also contain uh, contain additional requirements uh, regulated to to expedite processes. Processes conducted. Um, Conducted a, a, a conducted pursuant to either the expedited judicial or expedited administrative process must be presided over by an, an individual who is not a judge of the court. Told you they ain't real judges. I've been telling y'all this for years. I showed this to y'all in another video back in 2000 and what 19. So they're not real judges. The orders must uh, the, the the orders established by by expedite. Quit calling me, goddamn it. Orders like we fucking or something. <laughs> Let me tell this joke. I'm gonna call him back. Okay, orders established by uh, ex uh, expedited processes must have the same force and and, and effect under state law as orders established uh, by full judicial uh, process. Although either process may provide that that a judge first ratify the order within that within that broad limitation, each state is free uh, to free to this uh, to design. And an expedited uh, process that it that is best suited to its administrative needs and legal traditions. Uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna fall back on uh, the way um, from this here because I want I prove what I said as far as that go. You know that is it, it it has to be it's an agreement. It's something that you have to it's some type of agreement that kicks in. Now, well, I'm, let me get on to my other part. Ah, uh, here we go. Agreed order. Matter of fact, I'm going to start with agreed first. Settled or established by agreement. Settled or established by agreement. Uh, this word is uh, in, in a deed creates a covenant. This word in, uh, is a technical, it's a technical term and it is synonymous with contracted. Okay. <laughs> That's a case law. It's the case law right here. So you can look that up. Okay. Now it means X V termini. That is, it is a, the agreement of both parties, whether both whether both signed it or not, and each and each both consenting to it. So you don't have to use whether you sign it or not. Something in your actions uh, or lack thereof, you know, is what is what constitute agreement. So that will lead to what is called an agreed order. The order. Why is this thing not big enough? I made it big enough. Anyway, here we go. The only difference between an agreed order and one which is made uh, in the due course of the, of the proceeding in in an in an action is that the order that is that in one case it is agreed to and the other say and in the other it is made as as authorized by law. Now let's see, and that is the that is the case law for that. Okay. So just letting you know, they may not say it's an agreed order. They're just going to say an order. <laughs> see? So it's up to you to see what kind of, how, how did they establish this order? Most of the time, and most likely those kind of child support cases are agreed orders. Most of the time, that's what they are. So because of the fact that you agreed to it, some type of way you just, you chose to not file an objection into that court case, or you went with an applied agreement. As I mentioned in my previous videos, an applied agreement, an applied contract, um, you know, when it see, keep in mind, it says contracted. Agreed means contracted. Okay. Um, and we went to the, to the, what's the other word? Contract. That's not it. That's not it. Get out of my way. I'm done with you. I was trying to find the other, my other, um, my other, uh, contract. But anyway, let's see order. Where's this other one at? Order. That's going to be down at 12. 1298, 12 pit, 1298. 1298. Pardon me, y'all. Work with me. You'll see this damn thing. Here's something else, boy. These goddamn. These damn Apple laptops. 
These damn things ain't nothing like the old school laptops. They be doing all kind of extra shit. They trying to make it stand out. I don't need you to stand out. Let's see, 1298. I had to write down the page number so I can I know how to, how to scroll. Okay. Okay. Oh, damn, that was too far. Mike, come on, man. But yeah, but um, I'm gonna, I want to show, I want to find order for y'all so I can uh read exactly what it said as far as how how an order is, is it goes. Say 1298. Because come on, man. God, this is taking too long. This is why I like to have my stuff already sit sat there, so I don't have to do all this extra. It takes up too much time. Here we go. Order. Here we go. Here we go. I'm patient enough to do this one. Here we go. Nine and eight. Here we go. It's already highlighted. Okay, here we go. In practice, first of all, you see a mandate, precinct, uh, precinct, uh, a command or a direction, uh, uh, authoritatively given, say a rule or a regulation. See, this on, they don't get this established until they can get you to agree first, okay? Uh, distinct be between the order and requisition, okay? We done with that. Now, every direction of, of a court or judge or judge made or entered or entered in writing and not included in the in the in a judgment is um uh, is a uh, denominated uh, in uh, in order. Say an, an application for an order is, uh, is a motion. I'll tell y'all now, stop, stop running from doing a motion. An application for an order is a motion. Oh, so you you want to get, get an order, you want to get an order put in place, but you don't want to do no more. You want to do a demand for something. You can't demand shit in these four court case. <laughs> you can put a file of damn motion in that damn thing, get it dismissed. Okay, orders are, are also, uh, of course you need to have something to support that motion, but that's another topic. Uh, let's see. Orders are also issued. I mean, uh, this is what I really want to be right here. An order is is also an informal bill of exchange. That's crazy, ain't it? It's a bill of exchange or letters of request whereby a party to whom it is addressed is is directed to pay or deliver to a person therein named uh, the whole uh, the whole or part of of a fund or other uh, property of the person making the order. And um, and which it, and which it uh, is is in the possession of, of, of the draw e. That's the case law. Uh, Car versus Somerville. That's basically what it's talking about right there. You know, you got to order to pay something. Let's see. It is further a, desi a, a designation of the person to whom a bill of exchange or negotiable promissory note is to be paid. It is also used to uh, to designate a rank, class, or division of men as uh, the order of nobles, uh, order order of knights, order of priests, etc. Okay, that ain't that don't come that don't apply to us. But I just wanted to kind of show that in there, put put that in this in this video because is is you need to understand what a, what types of orders that they put in there. What types of order you see right here? You got all kind of orders in here. This, yep, all these different orders, final orders. Yeah, what general, interlocutory, all the different types of orders. How do they get these orders? No, it's not just one type of order. You know what I'm saying? It's different types of orders they put in there. See, see right here, restraining order. <laughs> A lot of y'all know about that one. <laughs> order of discharge. Yeah, it's like different types of orders that they have. They speaking order, different types of order, stop order. There are different types of order that can be filed into a court case, okay? But you see, that's how they establish these things based on they have to start with getting your uh, obtaining your agreement to even be a part of it before they can actually file in a, an actual initial order or mandate for you to pay anything. It's only because you agreed to do it. You agreed to do it, whether you is because you didn't file an, uh, an objection, any type of thing in there. It says it in the Child Support Enforcement Act. And if you read that whole act, You'll see they even talk about the punishments that come with not uh, that come from not, uh, 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 you know, uh, not doing it, not not complying with, you know, those obligations. If you choose not to do so, um, not to pay those 
those um that the you know the child support payments. You also agree to the punishment too. Here we go. Get on back over here. What are we doing? What are we doing over here? Get your ass over here. Okay. Okay. I'm trying to see what page am I going to go to? It talks about funding program. That's the impact. This thing. This thing goes deep too. Say impact. Impact on poverty. Yeah, right. Let's see. Bankrupt child support enforcement. Child support, yeah, child support enforcement. Now, this is probably going to be the part right here. Collections. It's going to be right there. Probably somewhere up in there. Uh, come on. Where is it? Y'all going. It's gonna, it, it tells you everything what they do. See, here we go. See, the order facilitate collections of support. Um, uh, in interstate cases, the uh, the state must cooperate must cooperate with the with with other states in establishing paternity, locating absent parents, and securing compliance with an order. Compliance with an order is that uh, issued by another state. See, they're not committing identity theft once you've actually once you've actually agreed to it because you gave them the information. You didn't call them out on nothing. You didn't file no objection in there. That means you agreed to it. So. You agree to them passing your information, the information around your to, to, to the, the legal name that only you're authorized to conduct business with. You agreed to this. You entered into this agreement with them when you didn't you didn't file no objection into it. Okay, the states are required to use several enforcement tools. They must say they must use the IRS a refund offset procedure for welfare and non-welfare families, and they are and they also must uh. uh also must determine periodically where an individual receiving unemployment compensation or uh, compensation or child support. Um, the state, the state employment security agency, part of the C, SC, uh, is required to uh, to uh, to withhold unemployment benefits. See what I'm saying? And pay child and, and to pay child support of uh, agencies any outstanding support obligations uh, established by an agreement with it uh, with the individual or through the uh, legal process other enforcement techniques states uh, must use include imposing liens against against real and personal property for the amounts of, of overdue support uh, withholding state ta- uh, federal tax payable to the to the parent who is delinquent in the in the, uh, in the support payment uh, reporting reporting the amount of overdue report uh, uh, support to the consumer credit bureaus upon request all this stuff is, uh, is it that violates the privacy act the privacy act uh, the, all this this is why this whole shit is pro- unconstitutional you know and you can't try me with I'm touched because I beat my case <laughs> okay requiring in you know but it, it triggers me to see that they're actually moving like this to get to 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 it turns you into a debt slave when you agree to this type of shit right here, okay? Because you agree to this and you don't know you're agreeing to it because you didn't fight for your own rights. Reporting the amount of overdue support to consumer credit, you know, uh, let's see, requiring individuals who have demonstrated a pattern of delinquent uh, payments to to post a bond or or give some other guarantee or secure payment of overdue support. Establishment procedures, uh, processes within within a state judicial system or under administrative processes for obtaining an, an enforcement child support order and uh, determining paternity. These ex- expedited procedures include giving state authorities um, to to secure assets. Um, say giving states authority to to secure assets to satisfy payment of past due support by seizing and and um and 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 attaching unemployment compensation workers compensation judgments settlements lotteries assets held in financial institutions that's your bank account and public and private uh, retirement funds they can't even fuck with how, how they get to fuck with your your anyway Withholding, sus- uh, suspending, or restricting the use of driver's license that messes with your your right to autonomy. You have the right to move along the earth as you please. Totally unconstitutional. 
a professional, and, and that's without governmental interference because if you get pulled over without a driver's license, your ass going to jail, you're going to get a ticket, however they, they deal with it in your state. Professional and un, 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 uh, occupational license um, and a recreational and sporting license and non-custodial uh, parents who, who owe past support. Denying passports, you can't even travel the world. To um uh to persons owing more than five thousand dollars and do uh and, and past due support, requiring unemployed unemployed non custodial uh parents who um who owe child support to the to the child uh to the child receiving tenant um, benefits to participate in uh, appropriate work activities. <laughs> I need you to work, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Performing quarterly data uh, uh, matches with with financial with financial institutions and voiding fraudulent fraudulent transfers of assets to to avoid payment of child support. That who and 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 you'd be surprised how many women look at me sideways because I tell them I don't want to be on child support. I, I beat my child support case. I, they look at me like I'm supposed to want to be a fucking debt slave to any state. Now you take care of your baby. How about bitch you be on child support? <laughs> I be wanting to cuss them out when they talk like that because everybody knows this shit is not fair. It's unconstitutional. It is. There's nothing. There's nothing fair about this at all. In many cases, it hurts the child because if you incarcerated and you can't make a living, you you going down and your your um your your health conditions start to deteriorate because you're going through this types of stuff. You can't be around for to for help raise your child anyway. So this is not in the best interest of a child at all. I would even get a certified copy of this damn thing right here and use it in a habeas corpus case. A petition for a writ of habeas corpus and get this shit here thrown the fuck out. Because this, this whole program here makes no goddamn sense for anybody to agree with it. But if you don't file no, no objection into your court case, how you expect for somebody else to fight for your, you know, to, to enforce your rights when you won't fight for them? This is your job to make sure you get rid of this shit. It's, it's your job to make sure you you file an objection into this thing. You get your stat. You get you you, you put, and you can do this stuff without going. I'm talking about this status correction. This status correction that the you can get rid of this shit. There's many ways to beat this shit. It really is. You know, the easiest way I think to do is through trust law. That's what that's 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 my take on it. That's just my take on it. The thing is, this stuff is not constitutional at all. And see, if you're dealing with if you're dealing with a petition for a writ of habeas corpus, that deals with equity law. That deals with living men and women. And you got a certified copy of this shit in here, proving that this that these are the things that they're doing to your ass, <laughs> and this is what you're suffering. You know, and you and, and it, it 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 totally takes away your your freedom. Your, your, your ability to move freely upon the earth and raise your child the way you want to raise your child. Dude. You have fundamental rights to raise your kids the way you want to raise your kids. Not with governmental interference turning you into a debt slave because they want to make some fucking money off of you. Because I can go deeper into this here thing because it goes into the financial aspect of it too. Because the states make money off this stuff. <laughs> they make money off this stuff and that's, they have a financial interest in this. That alone should even that is ground for shutting the damn case down because they this causes at your expense and your child is suffering and so are you. But anyway, bottom line is <laughs> I just went on a tangent. I just popped off. This stuff this is what got me started for making videos in the first place because of this damn child support shit. I never beat now. I, I never I never had to beat the child support case twice. I only beat it one time, but I started making my video. I started making um the videos about this stuff back in 2019 after I beat mine and other people started reaching out to me about this stuff and they had not beat it. And I had to show them what I did to beat my to beat my case, but I haven't had to fight it. I haven't had to beat no child support case again after that. I only have one baby. So anyway, I'm popping off. I'm kind of ranting now. But anyway, bottom line is contract law operates based on your consent, your agreement. Your, or if you choose not to file an objection into your court case, you choose not to not to fight, not to not to not to do put any any paperwork in order. I, you know, do some stuff that you got to get proactive with fighting, you know, enforcing your own rights. 
and any 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 court order that was established without your consent, you you and it's it's basically unco- all this stuff is unconstitutional. You know, it violates the the you know, it, it, in so many different ways, it's unconstitutional. But it's not unconstitutional if you agree to it. You agree to this shit. That's what. That's the loophole. Is the fact that you agree to it. Okay. I just want to get on off of here, y'all. I'm getting up out of here. Emrose, signing the fuck out.